Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm going to go just on the fly. There's a whole bunch of stuff that happened over the weekend. I'm going to give a take on it, reaction to it, and talk about um, how it affects teams like the Bernier trade and the Arizona trade where they traded Larson away and uh, future free agent possibilities. The New York Rangers trade of this Buknevich. I almost didn't say that right, but I did. Saved it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm going to look at that now. All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like all four major sports and teams involved in those sports? All, Steel Flyers All Sports Network is growing into being one of the finest uh, websites in the land, www.steelflyers.com, when it comes to all sports, all the time, every team. Check it out. Amazing. Uh, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. I will be going on actually in about a half an hour. Uh, Tuesday to Tuesday and Thursday, I'm on in the evenings from uh, 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern. Come check it out. We do collaborations and uh, I have, I have uh, guests on and it's all interactive. We talk back and forth to each other. If you are a hockey hardcore fan, you got to check it out. It's really, really good. No, I, I, not because I, it's my thing, but because all the people in the land say so. I don't know, actually. I think it's really good. Go check it out. Okay, and in the end of this, I'll be handing out some pearls and stuff to all our subscribers. You might want to check that out, see what that's about. All right, let's go look at it. Window. Here we go. First one, Colorado Avalanche. Extend Kale McCarr, $9 million for six. $54 million. Now, I talked to... Uh, um, some Colorado fans there a little bit. And some people are saying that, you know, that was too much money. Not many though. And it shouldn't be because that is going to look like an absolutely fantastic deal in three, four years. Joe Sackick is the man. He's got so many freaking players there getting underpaid. It is ridiculous. I don't know how he does it. One of the ways, I guess, is what he's doing with Landeskog. Holding out, holding out, holding out. We'll see what happens with that. But this deal is going to look... I, I bet you that Kale McCarr, within this six years, gets two Norrises. A Norris Trophy, two-time Norris Trophy defenseman making $9 million a year. You tell me that isn't a good deal? I think it's a very good deal. All right, next. Uh, Seattle Kraken take Matthew Benier second overall. I uh, I did a uh, draft prediction thing, and I did pretty good on it. You might want to check it out. And I had him taking Matthew Benier's too. It's his kind of player. If you look at Benier's, tell me he doesn't look like a Felino. My gosh, does he. He looks, plays, acts, everything like a Felino. Francis loves those kind of guys, and he got one of those kind of guys. Uh, Sabres selected Owen Power first overall. Um, this is going to be interesting. Now, you heard it there first, okay? I think Owen Power is going to be a very good defenseman. Don't get me wrong. I would not be surprised, though, if Edvinson, who was picked by Detroit, ends up being better than Owen Power. But good job, Buffalo, for picking what could be a, a one-two defenseman for the future for you. Columbus Blue Jackets acquire Jake Bean from the Carolina Hurricane. Now, I'm a Kind of a big Carolina Hurricane fan, but there's some head scratchers going on here. It seems pretty obvious to me if they have an inkling that you're not going to take a contract within their salary structure, whatever that is, they don't waste any time. They just move on. That's it. They don't cause any uh, friction in their organization. They don't have anything bad to say about you or you know, think less of you. It's like, cool, you want to go somewhere else? Off you go. We'll find a place for you. And they get a second round pick. I also said a little earlier uh, in one of my videos, I said that 
you watch two years from now, you're going to look at the Columbus Blue Jackets and go, how the heck did that happen? Kekalayan is a freaking genius. Uh, it also talks about the Seth Jones trade, where we're going to talk about that in a second, so I won't. But Jake Bean, I don't know. Defensive issues for sure. He's been taking a while. He's 23 years old now. It's been, I think he's been going a little slower than Carolina wanted him to go as well. They thought he would have grabbed another spot on the lineup. But on the same note, he was kind of buried in that Carolina lineup because they had a lot of good defensemen. Um, this probably would have been his opportunity, but now he gets a great opportunity going to Columbus, who just traded Seth Jones, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, but he's got to work on his defense quite a bit. Kekalainen's one of the smartest hockey minds in the planet, though. I, I kind of trust it. And we're talking about the Seth Jones trade right now. The Columbus Blue Jackets deal Seth Jones to the Chicago Blackhawks for Adam Boquist, who, by the way, at 20 years old, is looking like an exceptionally good defenseman. Possibly every bit as good as Seth Jones. Um, but they that wasn't it. The Blackhawks signed Jones to an eight-year extension worth $9.5 million, million per season. You see that show? Anyways, <laughs> um, on pro- uh, how do I explain this? Jones has not been good the last two years. Simple as that. You just ha- I've watched a divorce-worthy amount of hockey, and I have watched a lot of Columbus – Blue Jackets, because I'm a big Tortorella fan, uh, although he's starting to come out that maybe I shouldn't have been. Uh, but $9.5 million for a guy who really analytically was poop the last two years defensively. And even I test watching him. Um, it could very well be all about confidence. Lion A said last year after he got traded, he said his confidence was as low as it ever was. And then he came out and said, basically blaming Tortorella, saying that he didn't allow him to play his game. I think that's very well the case here with Jones as well. He's an offensive guy who thinks offense first. And Tortorella was changing him into a defensive first player that adds offense, and it just didn't look like it ever truly worked with Jones. We'll see what happens in Chicago. Also, it's got the Bowmans, man. (laughs) Stan and Scotty Bowman. Scotty Bowman may be the most brilliant hockey mind in hockey history. So who am I to say, right? But it's interesting. I think it's kind of a gamble, at least from that perspective, for Chicago. However, the return is fantastic. With it's a uh, the flip of the thirty second overall pick, uh, so they get the eleventh overall pick that this past this year. Uh, Chicago picked, uh, or sorry, Columbus picked. Oh, uh, Stillman, Corey Stillman. Wow, that is going to be interesting to see. Was it Corey? Picked Stillman in the eleventh pick. I really was high on him and. Uh, Kekalainen is, if he's a brilliant hockey mind, but for sure, scouting wise and, and draft develop and development wise, maybe the best in the league. So that could turn out to bite Chicago for sure. And a second round pick in 2022, which is a very deep draft. And we're going to get into that in another trade that happened here in the next little while. That is almost like getting a first in this draft. So that is a lot to get back for Jones. Now, if Jones turns out, turns things around, becomes more confident, and becomes a defenseman that everybody believed he could be, this deal is Chicago's, probably. But Boquist is going to be really good as well. It'll, it'll still be close. It depends on how Stillman turns out and how the second-round pick turns out, too. But it could be huge for Chicago. He, Jones has all the tools to be the number one guy on any team. So we'll see if that's what he turns into there in Chicago. Uh, he's going to be with his brother Caleb too, who they picked up in the Keith trade, which Chicago won that one for sure. 
Uh, Ryan Suter drawing interest from the Islanders and Bruins. I am hearing there was talk that Suter and Parise may go to the Islanders, but I heard today, and I don't have the link on it right now, that it's unlikely that Parise and Suter will be going to the same team. However, I could see both of these. In fact, I predicted as much in one of my previous videos. Uh, I predicted that the, I thought the best plot for him was probably the Bruins, but the Islanders do make a lot of sense as well. It depends on what he feels is best for him, I imagine. And it's not 100% that both of them are in, but I, I think it's very, very likely. Vancouver Canucks acquire Oliver Ekman Larson and Ga Connor Garland. On paper, this looks like Vancouver won this trade all day. I was discussing this with my draft live draft show with uh, Peyton on the radio, one of the finest in the land. Go check out his uh, channel as well. Uh, I call him the prize. Uh, we discussed this, and I think both teams sort of did well, but it's really going to depend on what Al Oliver ekman Larson does moving forward because it's not about how he played the last two, three years. This is what's concerning for me. He hasn't been great in, in Arizona the last two or three years. Um, a lot of that could have been just because Arizona is so bad. A lot of it could be because of the style of uh, coaching Rick Tockett had where you basically just crowd around your goaltender and block shots. I think the, uh, I think Larson's creativity and all that was stunted by talking. And that could change all day for with Green being there with Quinn Hughes and all of that stuff like that. So that'll be interesting to see. Connor Garland was uh, eyebrow raising in this trade. Um, he's young. He's a fan favorite. But it was seemed... It must have been... I, I think what happened here is Garland saw the future of Arizona at 25 years old and thought, do I want to be part of this or do I want to be have a chance to win a little earlier in my career? And he wasn't willing to sign a long-term contract. And they just said, you know what, it's hard, but we're going to have to cut bait. So they make this trade. They get some bad contracts that can still play, at least two of them anyways. Antoine Roussel and Jay Beagle uh, for the room presence and helping those guys learn how to win face-offs and all that stuff like that. But most of it is just taking on contract space so they can afford, uh, so Vancouver can afford Al Ekman Larson and Louis Erickson. I would buy him out instantly, and I think they will. I would not have that guy in my room. No way. No way. I've gone over this before. You can check out in my previous videos why. But for the most part, it's because the guy is clueless that he sucks. And that is always frustrating. Uh, so they got the ninth overall pick in this, uh, previous draft, Arizona did, and, uh, a 20, 2023 seventh round pick as well for taking on this contract. Um, on paper, like I said, on paper, it looks like Vancouver wins this all day and they could, um, the Arizona Coyotes took. Uh, Gunther, who played for the Edmonton uh, Oil Kings, and in this year in junior put up uh, two points a game average, but in a, in a very small window, but looks like a fantastic, like Johnny Goudreau, but six feet. He looks really, really good. They could have got a steal there. There are some people that had him number two in this year's draft, so... Could be a fantastic pickup for them. We'll see how it goes for Vancouver. I think Garland's going to help for sure. Ekman Larson's going to have to turn things around. Maybe he will, and Vancouver could look like a very good team next year. Uh, Boston Bruins signed Taylor Hall. This one is was not really uh, a surprise. Uh, we most most people saw this coming. A six million dollar AAV for for four years. I think it's a fine signing. He wanted to be there. He showed like he had some chemistry with Krejci, who they still need to sign. And they need a depth in their roster as far as offense is concerned. I just hope that this deal doesn't prevent them from signing defensemen because they absolutely need them. And uh, we just mentioned that Suter would be an option. I think it would be a good option. Um, what For Suter, I'm hearing four years at $4 million or $5 million, though. 
That's a lot for a 36-year-old defenseman. So we'll see if that comes up. Uh, he's got signing bonuses, no movement clause, uh, plus 16 trade, uh, trade no, no trade clause uh, for the four years that he's going to be there. It's a decent deal. He looks like he's about a 70-point uh, player now in the league. It's about the money for what a 70-point player gets. They seem to like him. All seem to like Boston. So uh, we'll see what he does in the future with the strong team. He really hasn't played in a strong team for a full year yet. So And now he has. So there's no excuses, Mr. Hall. No excuses at all. You got to be winning there. But hey, <laughs> Terry Price goes to knee surgery. We'll be ready for next season. I predicted this too. I said that I think the price thing is is being overblown so to make sure Seattle doesn't pick price. But I also didn't think Seattle had any thoughts of picking him with uh, Price's long-term contract like that. So good for him. He's going to be back. He's had a lot of knee, sur- knee stuff, injuries, all that stuff like that. Uh, hopefully he can have a good regular season next year to continue on with the playoffs. They definitely need him to. Uh, probably the biggest question mark for Montreal next year. Uh, they could be it weird just after they go to the finals. They go back to the old division makeup as they were before with Tampa, Toronto, Boston. All of those teams in there. It's possible Montreal doesn't even make the playoffs next year. What would you guys say about that? Uh, St. Louis Blues acquire Pavel Biknevich. Um, now, I, I was over on the Rangers post. You can check me out at Pearl of Wisdom on Facebook. Look me up on that. Uh, I'm also on a lot of all, all the Facebook groups there for each team. And I'm on Twitter, too. Uh, Pearl of NHL POW. Go check out my Twitter account. I, I'm, I'm writing on there and talking on there all the time. Love to have you. Um, Biknevich from the Rangers in exchange for Sammy Blay. And a 2022 second round pick. Now, Vignavich has almost been a point to game winger the last two years. And I understand the Rangers fans are looking at this going, oh my gosh, no. We can't, and you're, we didn't get anywhere near enough. And I, you, I think there's an argument to be made there. But on the same note, we're going to see this more and more that. Next year's 2022 second round picks are going to be of high value. Um, Like I mentioned before, it is such a deep draft. It's almost like getting a first in this year's draft. And the Rangers get Sammy Blay, who is extremely underrated. And Rangers fans, you're going to find out why. You're going to love this guy. He hits. He can put up half a point a game almost, 30 to 35 points. Play in your third line. I haven't seen his defensive stats, uh, but from what I've watched of him, he looks pretty adequate defensively. And they're building a playoff-type roster. We've seen it over and over and over again. Guys like Sammy Blay and the Goudreau, Goudreau that you picked up, although it was a hefty price, they really do do a lot for you for your cup chances. Tampa Bay didn't win a cup until they got Goudreau's and Coleman's and stuff like that. These are the kind of guys they're looking to pick up here. Their value is underrated, and you're going to see that their value is underrated. It on Right away, it looks like they didn't get enough. But when you consider the fact that they probably weren't going to be able to re-sign Buknevich to what he probably deserves, and they weren't wanting to get any bodies back, I don't think this is a bad trade, really. Um, might have liked to have seen maybe one more pick out of it. I would have liked to have seen who else was into it. Um, also, again, as we were going to see, as we talked about with the Reinhardt deal, this has gotten to the point. It's gotten to the point now with restricted free agents that they sort of have no trade clauses built in because. All they got to do is tell their agent, I'm not signing here. I'm not signing here. I'll go there because I have no choice because I'm a restricted free agent. But when I become an unrestricted free agent, I'm not signing a contract with them. 
And how much did a guy like did Pavel Buknevich look around the league and say, there's only certain teams I'm going to resign with. And St. Louis has a really good, you know, still has a decent team perceived perceptively anyways. He gets an opportunity now after Tarasenko is leaving to become a number one winger with O'Reilly as a center. Great opportunity there for him. And presumably it should be a strong team. However, I'm not so sure about that. But Bugnevich thinks obviously it must be. Uh, Flyers acquire Rasmus Ristolainen. I just did a video on that. Go check it out. Uh, maybe I'll put it down in the link in the comment section on this trade. So I'll skip over it right now, but I'll go to this one. Carolina negotiating with Peter Morazic and Jonathan Bernier, who, and I didn't talk about this trade yet, the Detroit Red Wings selected, or traded, selected, Nedeljkovic to the, to the, sorry, Carolina traded Nedeljkovic to the Detroit Red Wings for Bernier in a third round pick. And that on paper, that looks like a terrible trade for the Carolina Hurricane. And it could be, as far as I'm concerned. Um, obviously, they weren't able to get a, a, a deal going for long term with Nadalkovich. And Carolina is basically showing that they're a type of team that if you're not willing to, to commit with to us for the number we have, you're gone. Regardless, we there's other players out there. We're looking for people who want to be here for the number that we want them to be here for. That's that's the way it is. Uh, no hard feelings towards Nedeljkovic, I'm sure. Just go off and do whatever you got to do there. Trade him into Detroit. Detroit signs him to only a two-year deal, which puts him at, to be an unrestricted free agent, making it look like what he wants is to go to unrestricted free agency. So Detroit might only have them for two years. Now Detroit also took Kosa in this year's draft, very high in the draft. I believe it was around 14th. They traded for the 14th and uh, traded up to get him. And uh, so that would lead me to believe that, you know, they're, they're trying to build up their goalie uh, situation there, and we'll see if Nedeljkovic is part of it. So now they get Jonathan Bernier, and this is what I wanted to talk about. Jonathan Bernier, to me, for me, and you can tell me in the comment section if you think I, I'm crazy, has been one of the top seven goaltenders in the league the last two years. Uh, you may scramble over to Detroit Red Wings and say, well, he only put a 2.95 with a .914. The Red Wings' defense was absolutely horrible, okay? John Gibson, also an amazing goaltender, put worse numbers up in Anaheim last year than Detroit than Bernier did in Detroit. And Anaheim has a better defense than Detroit Red Wings does by quite a bit, actually. And so Bernier was just rocking, man, stopping pucks like freaking crazy. I watched him... I said, I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey. I watch a lot of Detroit the last two years. Bernier blew my mind. And what I'm hearing is they're low-balling Bernier, and they may lose him, Carolina, that is. That would be extremely disappointing. And this would be a great spot for Bernier. He's got a chance to finally, at 32 years old, 32 years old be the guy with a strong defense in front of him. I'm saying it right now, if they get him signed up with that kind of defense in front of him, I believe Bernier will be in the Vesna conversation next year. You heard it here. You can call me on it later. Uh, there was one more I wanted to do here. No, that was it. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming in and listening to this fine programming. If there's anything else you'd like to converse about or want me to talk about, let me know in the comments section. Um, now, I got it. Now, I want to tell you a little bit of something. I believe in pants free living. Okay. That does not mean you don't wear under clothes below your belt or below your waist. It means pants free. So nothing restricting. I am talking about a world where 
there is no constricting clothing whatsoever. And I'm going to get, I'm going to make a clothing line called the quilt. No, the squilt. Sorry, can't even say. It's going to be a half skirt, half kilt for men and women. Yeah. So hit that subscribe, please. Get this going so we can get the funds to make ourselves some squilts. And we can go all over the land in the, in the, in the Jet O Frolic, which also is going to need some funding. So hit that subscribe button for that. I'm going to come to all your lands and we're all going to wear our squilts. And we're going to go to all the hockey arenas that there is. It's going to be amazing. So do you want to be a part of it? Touch the subscribe and the like button. Comment down on the bottom. And uh, let's do a Prillo dance together, okay? Ready? Let's get ourselves all stretched out. Oh, by the way, this is my Ernie shirt. I like Ernie. Okay, bye.